What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. As the economy is having a tale of two sides here right now, and a lot of it is getting really, really worse here, and some of it's getting better. We're going to go over that here in this video with what is affecting your money and investing, the stock market as really, really struggling here. Remember that about 50% of Americans do have money in the stock market through the 401ks, IRAs, pensions, or just regular money in the market, which is really, really have been getting crushed here lately. And uh, also we're going to be talking about uh, President Biden's new potential presidential executive order, which could help out millions and millions of Americans in this video, and uh, gas and oil prices uh, having a surprising move in this video, which also could affect your wallets, well, is affecting your wallets, but could uh, change here in a good way. So uh, let's jump right in. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. This way you won't miss out on new videos that come out here on our channel every day. I will keep you up to date here with what's going on here in our country. Also, thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below. You guys are awesome. All right, here we go. Yes, yeah, as you can see here, stocks stage a big comeback here today as uh, the Dow Jones Index was down over 600 points here today, but still finished with a moderate loss here today down almost 130 points here for the day. Um, the S&P 500 uh, actually ended up slightly positive, uh, but you can see how much it was down here during the day. Uh, the Dow Jones was actually down uh, dramatically, very dramatically, almost, almost over 600 points, over 600 points. And you can see here... Um, how much we've come down here in, in five days ago here. Um, yeah, that's about 700 points from five days ago. And from a month ago, you can see here, we are down, a month ago we were at 33,200. Now the Dow Jones is down below 31,000. Yeah. And a year ago, you can see here, we again, we were at 34,600, 34,700. Now we're down below 31,000. So you can see here the stock market, which is a one measure, one indicator of how the economy is doing, down significantly, down significantly. And many people think that this is a sign that we are already in a recession. Yeah. And with inflation at a 40-year high, gas prices still near an all-time high, this is affecting everybody. And, um, you know, stocks really just one indication of people's retirement funds, people's long term savings, people's, you know, wealth, if you have it. Um, but it really does affect people's retirements, people's retirements. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're supposed to put money in there. It grows for your, your 401k, your IRA. It grows for your long term money. You know, it, it's now down below a one or two year um, growth rate. Yeah, and this this is just an indication of how bad our economy is doing as we're supposed to be coming out of a recession, that this is largely due to inflation. We're seeing this in gas prices. We're seeing this in oil prices. We're seeing this in food prices. But it, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because we're actually seeing, as you see here, the price of oil is actually dropping. Oil tumbles more than 8% and drops below $100 a barrel as recession fears mount. So oil, the price of oil per barrel, as you can see here, WTI crude down below $100 a barrel. Brent crude down to 102.9. So again, this is nowhere even close to all-time highs. I mean, we were at back in uh, you know several months ago, 140 a barrel. We're down to 99 dollars a barrel for the price of oil. Gas prices here should be nowhere near 
the all-time highs here of for the U.S. I mean, you look at these prices here for the U.S., they should not be at $4.80 for regular, na you know, national average. If you're in California, <laughs> you know, you're a much different price there. I'll, I'll show you that here in a second. Um, diesel at five seventy two. dollars You can see here, these are both still uh, kind of high or kind of close to the all-time records. Uh, 501 was the record here for regular and leaded, which was only about three weeks ago, June 14th. And diesel at 581, the all-time record here. That's just pennies, pennies ago uh, at June 19th. So the question here, with oil at below $100 a barrel, why is oil, or I'm sorry, why is gas priced like, like it's at $160 a barrel? Yeah, this is it's just ludicrous. It's just ludicrous what the price of gas is priced at when oil, which is what gas is made from, is is the cost is nowhere near that. Yeah, you can see here the California, state of California average gas price is six dollars and twenty-three cents and six ninety for diesel. Oh my gosh. I mean that's that's like a almost a dollar fifty more for regular, and diesel at six ninety. Oh my, that's like seven bucks a gallon for diesel. Wow, I mean, how can you even afford gas? I mean, you almost have to have an electric car if you live in California. By the way, over one million people own electric cars in California, and I I can see why <laughs> because that's how can you even afford that right that's unbelievable that's unbelievable i can't even imagine paying that yikes and inflation is so bad everywhere food prices are at an all-time high everywhere in the world in the u.s everywhere um gas prices all-time high we're close to them here uh, even though oil has come down dramatically, the gas companies, the oil companies, they're just, they're lowering the gas prices by pennies, by pennies. We're seeing very, very little relief. And and this is affecting food prices. In fact, food, you know, the raw cost of food has gone up here dramatically as well. Um, it's affecting food and, and, and fast food places. In fact, check this out. Yeah, McDonald's. McDonald's franchisees have ditched their dollar drinks as inflation stings them as well. Just, just literally here as today, this has come out. McDonald's franchisees in some U.S. markets have ditched their dollar drinks, a long-standing $1 drink promotion. The Wall Street Journal has reported some operators are raising beverage prices to offset the impact of sustained food inflation, though most stores still offer $1 drinks. And as this is going forward, we're probably going to see more and more of these locations um, raising their prices on even drinks, even drinks. McDonald's identified inflationary pressures as a threat to the company's bottom line in their most recent uh, quarter, adding that the company has limited ability to address pricing risks. The burger chain gave owners permission to drop the $1 drink promotion in January, according to the Wall Street Journal. And as of May, some franchisees groups have shifted to market the value menu instead. Yeah, and you could see here from Business Insider, every country around the world it's trying to tackle inflation. It's not working anywhere. Wow, what a headline. What a headline. Business Insider, they're not partisan. They're not Democrat. They're not Republican. And this just kind of shows, this just shows what I've been saying here. Because um, it's just, my research shows, you can look this up here as well. Just Google inflation in any country and you'll see it. Every country around the world is trying to tackle inflation. It's not working anywhere. So you can try to blame whoever you want to, 
it's just it's a tough situation to solve and it's it's not an easy one to solve either yeah you can see here a glance abroad however shows the problem isn't limited to just the u.s inflation is running historically hot around the world as economies grapple with a slew of global pressures prices in the european union are up roughly 8.1 percent just slightly below the U.S.'s 8.6% year-over-year inflation rate. Price growth is even faster in the U.K. with its one-year inflation gauge hitting 9.1% in May. Even Japan is enduring higher-than-usual inflation, bucking a decades-long trend of stagnant price growth. And this is the problem here. When you look at inflation around, I mean, European Union, which is a whole bunch of countries, 8.1%, the U.S. at 8.6%, and the U.K. at 9.1%. When you look at these numbers, they're all in the same range. They're all in the same range. And this is because we're, we're a global economy right now. We're all dealing with the same thing. We were all dealing with the same virus. We all, I mean, we all buy goods from each other at this point. We're all dealing with high gas prices. We all dealt with the same pandemic, which is unfortunate. Um, we're all dealing with supply chain issues. We're all dealing with global chip shortages. We're all shipping things back and forth. We're all dealing with somewhat of the same situation. We all had somewhat of lockdowns. I mean, some countries, you know, did it different than others. Um, but realistically, this is a, it's a problem all around the world. And, you know, some, you know, you're going to see slight fluctuations, slight differences, slight policy changes around the world, different presidents, different Democrats, different Republicans. Some countries don't even call them that different thought processes, different bills passed, different packages passed, different amount of helps with different countries. But, um, Realistically, it all comes down to uh, what can be done, what can be done. And uh, that, that kind of leads us to this. Yeah, President Biden weighing an executive order. You can see here right here, President Biden administration weighs extraordinary action to make your mortgage cheaper for millions and millions of Americans. And uh, this is just kind of the latest um, item on the table here. Here's the details of this. Check this out. The Biden administration may trim mortgage costs for new and low income home buyers in a move to make home buying more accessible, the Wall Street Journal reports. Industry officials are asking the Federal Home Administration, the FHA, to cut premiums it charges for loans they insure by $50 to $70 a month per buyer, $50 to $70 per month per buyer, though some analysts say the FHA is unlikely to make such deep cuts, the newspaper reports. But on $50 to $70 a month per buyer would be significant over the course of time. Biden's moves to make home buying more affordable have so far centered on easing constraints on home supplies, which can drive up costs. The U.S. is about 2 million homes short, which is part of the reason why home prices are going up in, in price as well. Last month, the Federal Reserve raised its key interest rates by three, quarter, three quarters of a point, its largest interest rate hike in three decades. And they're probably going to do so again. You can see here Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell suggests that another three-quarter point hike was possible at the end of the Fed's next meeting later this month in July. The Associated Press report uh, reported here as well. Interest rates are going up fast, which means a lot of people are going to be paying more money on interest, including credit cards and um, things like new home mortgages as well. Borrowing costs across the United States rose sharply after the rate hike, with the average 30-year mortgage rate clearing 6% now, 
the highest level it's been at since before the 2008 financial crisis. So that's 14 years ago. Yeah. And it's up 3% already since the start of this year. And remember that there's probably going to be three more rate hikes this year alone. So they've had three rate hikes this year already. And there's probably going to be three more rate hikes this year. So the interest rates are already up 3%. Um, even though they haven't raised interest rates 3%, the actual home loans are up 3%. So the market has kind of uh, maybe priced in some of the future interest rates um, ahead of time on the home loans. Yeah, so you can let me know your thoughts here on this. But yeah, it's gotten uh, uh, extremely more expensive for home buyers and um, especially for first time home buyers or anybody going to buy a home now going forward. Uh, for the next, at least next year or maybe two, I mean, we're looking at probably millions of people over the course of that time span. It's going to be significantly more expensive. I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars over the course of time with that interest rate hike. In fact, if we look at it here right now, you know, sometimes you get slightly different results here um, when you Google this here. But according to the Federal Reserve economic data, the median prices, the median price of houses sold in 2022 is $428,000. Now, right now, you know, if you go somewhere else, like in California, the average cost of a home in California right now is $834,000. That's the median home price. And I actually just read somewhere that the average home price in California is just crossed a million dollars, a million dollars. And I believe in New York City, it's even higher. So it really depends on the area here. But if we go back here, the uh, according to the Federal Reserve Economics Area, the median home price of a home sold in 2022 is 428000 because inflation is getting, <laughs> you know, it depends on the area. 400,000 can get you a good home in some areas, and in some areas, you can't even buy a home for that price. Yeah, so just to give you an idea here, on a $400,000 home, uh, just for simple math here, no down payment, interest rate of 3%, which you would have been able to get here just six months ago, okay? At 3%, 30-year mortgage, conventional loan, you can see here your total monthly payment would be 1686 per month. That's what you used to be able to pay at a 3% mortgage. Okay. Just for round numbers here. We're just going round numbers, round interest rates, just to show you what you could have been able to get a $400,000 home for. Okay. Six months ago. Okay. Just for round numbers, just for round interest rates. Okay. But now that interest rates are about 3% higher, I'm going to show you what that same exact home would cost. By the way, note here that you're going to pay $200,000 in interest on that $207,000 in interest over 30 years on that $400,000 home, okay? So note that. Now we're going to go back up here, and on that $400,000 home, all we're going to do is change this interest rate to, instead of 3%, we're going to change it to 6%. That's the only thing we're going to change. This shows you how interest makes such a big difference. The same thing is same thing matters on your credit card interest. This is why credit card interest and credit card interest payments matter so much. So I want you to think about this when you're paying 20% interest on your credit card payments every single month. Okay. This is why if nobody's ever told you this, you can say, well, thank you, Jimmy, because at least I learned something. Um, because once upon a time I didn't know this and, and I learned this from people that were smarter than me. Okay. So, um, this is, this is why interest really kills you. And when you're investing Interest really helps you. This is, if you ever heard that saying, the rich get rich and the poor get poor, uh, this is why, because they have their money grow for them as opposed to having their, their money, you know, having banks get rich off them, okay? Um, because this is how banks get rich and this is just how money works, right? Okay, so remember, here's the old numbers. It was 1686 for your monthly payment and 
thousand dollars in interest paid over thirty years, sixteen eighty six. Your new payment by going away from a three percent interest rate to a six percent interest rate on your home is now twenty four hundred dollars. So you're going from sixteen eighty six, we'll just say seventeen hundred dollars, to now twenty four hundred dollars. So you're paying seven hundred dollars more a month with the exact same home. You're buying the exact same home. The only difference is a 6% interest rate instead of a 3% interest rate for the exact same home. And now you're paying $463,000 in interest for the exact same home over the exact same 30 years instead of $207,000 in interest with the exact same payoff date. Look at that. So this is why interest rate matters so much. And this is why you don't want to pay credit card interest or pay it off as fast as you can because this is why how credit card interest makes you poor. And this is why interest makes you poor. And then this, I'm not, this is just how money works. This is why, you know, knowledge makes you, knowledge is power. So this is why, you know, everybody refinanced that knew how this worked when interest rates were cheap because look at the difference. I mean, this is, this is an extra four hundred and like fifty six thousand dollars here that you're gonna pay more now. Yeah, what is that? Two hundred and fifty six thousand? Yeah, something like that. Just mental math here. That's a dramatic difference. This exact same house. Look at how much interest you're gonna pay more in interest than the houses. Remember, this is on a four hundred thousand dollar house. You're gonna pay more in interest than the house cost. And that's only at a 6% interest rate. Remember when interest rates used to be 10%, 12%, 14%, 16%? Remember when interest rates used to be that high back in the 80s or even the, at, the, at the end of the 70s? Imagine how much interest you were paying then. You were paying $600,000, $700,000 in interest over 30 years. Yeah, this is at only 6% interest rate. Yeah. So at least you can't say nobody ever told you this because this is very, very important. And remember, this works for all interest. That's the same thing with credit card interest. That's only at 6%. So imagine if your credit card interest is only 10% or only 12% or only 15%. Now, you're going to have a much smaller balance. You're not going to have a $400,000 balance. But if it's 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. It's the same principle. It's the same principle. That's why you want to pay that off as fast as you can. Uh, and if you have a credit card with a small balance, just pay that card off as fast as you can. Lock it away in a safe or even cut it up. And um, then you can double payments. You can use that payment that you're not using anymore and pay it on your next card because uh, you won't have to make that payment anymore. Uh, but this is a, it's it's important because a lot of people just don't know how interest works. If you, if you if no one's ever told you this before, you you really just wouldn't know this because it nobody teaches this stuff. Nobody tells this stuff. This isn't something you would hear at a July Fourth barbecue. Um, and I wouldn't have known this either if people smarter than me never told me this before either. Um, but this is why interest rates going higher and inflation going higher are going to hurt a lot of people even more so. And uh, the war in Russia, rising economy, high gas prices, all this stuff is bringing us back into recession. Yeah. So it's it's really a, it's a tough time all around. And uh, the government doing everything they can, like potentially this um, this new the president stepping in and the federal housing authority potentially doing this with uh with home buyers uh is one step that they can do to help i'll keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country let me know your thoughts here in the comments make sure to subscribe down below to our youtube channel and i'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country you can click here to see my newest video on stimulus checks which multiple states are passing right now some are actually coming out this week you can click on that video next and thanks for watching guys and i will see you in the next video